All right, welcome everybody. Welcome to the Doe Show. Happy Thursday. Man, this week has gone by quick. If you're watching us for the first time, my name is Dustin Tibbetts. I'm a financial advisor with Jazz Wealth. Uh, we're financial advisors. We help you with your investments. We help you uh, with your long-term re investments, retirement investments, whatever they may be. We build and manage our own portfolios. We are 100% fiduciary advisors, which means we'll always tell you what's best for you rather than us. That's uh, sort of rare and has to actually be stated in this industry because other advisors, as I see every single day, will sell you a product because they're making more money off of you rather than give you what you need. Well, we completely cut that out of our business model. There actually isn't a way for me to do something that is not in your best interest. We spent a lot of time making sure that that happens. So check us out at jazzwealth.com if you're interested. If you want to transfer an account, roll over an old 401k, we're happy to help you get started. It's pretty simple. You just click invest now up at the top, but you're not here to hear a promotion about Jazz Wealth. Also, by the way, was thinking about doing an open house class, like maybe a Thursday night or something, not tonight, but like a Thursday night where uh, we just do a live class and I'll just go through. What's it like to work with Jazz? What do you get? What happens? Just see if I can answer some questions. Is that boring or would that be kind of interesting to some of you that are on the fence and don't know what do we do and all the sort of questions that we get? I uh, was thinking about that. Anyways, the class today, the dough show, is all about keeping your dough straight and we're going to make this one really short, really simple because this is an easy one. I get the question all the time, Dustin, can I manage my own investments? I'm sort of interested in this thing. Uh, maybe you have an account somewhere and you're buying and selling some stocks and stuff. You enjoy it and you're like, tell you what, I think I can just do this for my retirement account. So can you DIY your own long-term investments? The short-term stuff, absolutely. You could do that anytime you want. There are many, 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 many great options out there for you to be able to buy and sell all the stuff that you're interested in. Maybe it's Bitcoin uh, that you're doing, pot stocks, whatever it is. We have lots of Canadian companies that people are interested in. Uh, so yes, you could do that for your short term. For the long-term investments, is it A, in your best interest to do it, and B, can you actually do it? So I'm gonna start the whole thing off. If you have to run, you can't watch anymore, I'm just gonna say yes, you absolutely can do your own retirement investing. There's no catch, I'm not gonna say, but, you know, no. I know, uh, obviously it would benefit us more if I tried to convince you guys to come over here, but I take a different approach. I'll teach you, I'll keep helping you, I'll keep helping you get your dough straight, and if along the way you find we're a good value, I'd rather you come to me because you see something you like rather than scare the pants off of you. So I'm not gonna do that. Here are some things you wanna consider, of course. There are, um, there was a big push towards getting people to invest in index funds. Now you think that it's because some of the biggest guys on the planet told you to do that, but reality is it's a, it's a designed effort. They are making tons of money by suggesting you put your money in index funds. Nothing wrong with it. I'm not gonna discount index funds. However, I find that most people uh, do poorly with index funds. And it, here's the thing. And now be honest with me. I want you to leave a comment or something below. Uh, this is what happens. Everybody I talk to, I go, what are you invested in now, if anything? And they go, well, you know, I bought some index funds and it's up about 2% this month or about 5% last month. And last year it did well. And a couple months ago it did well and all that stuff. And, I, and this is what I do. I swear to you on every call where somebody says this, I go, well, you're awfully interested in the performance in the short term for your index funds. You must really love this. And I always say that, right? So if you call and we talk, I'm going to do the same thing. I go, you must really love the markets. You know, that's interesting. What I'm doing is I'm feeling them out to see if they're interested, then go, go be interested. Just let me teach you. You don't need to use my service, right? So here's what the answer always is. And be honest if this is you as well. If you have an index fund, the people always say, oh yeah, I love looking at the index. So I just like to keep track. I find that it's interesting. Uh, and I like, you know, I buy a few other stocks here and there. I'm, I like to buy and sell a few things in my retirement account. Aha. That's where we got you because think about it. Your index fund is supposed to just sit there. You're supposed to buy it and never look back. You're supposed to leave it until the day you retire if that's how you want to invest. But nobody does that because it's interesting. The markets are so cool to watch. I wake up every day and I hear the bell going off and I don't wake up at 9.30 by the way, but I wake up and I hear the stock market bell and I get excited to go see what's going on. Well, you guys probably do too. The problem is you're buying and selling other stocks. 
So you got your index fund over here, and you're supposed to, of course, what they tell you is, you're supposed to buy it, never look back at it, just trust that the markets are gonna do well for you, it'll be fine. And then in your account, you've got some AMD, maybe you got some Micron, these are all popular stocks right now, uh, Nvidia because of the whole Bitcoin thing, maybe you got some Bitcoin in there, you got some pot stocks in there, and you're just buying and selling. So then I asked the question, you got the index fund, great. I think you should keep down that path. We are of no use to you if you like the index funds, that's fine. However, how do you do when you buy and sell your stocks? Give me some stories, tell me the good stuff. I love talking shop and so I'll say, how'd you do on your last Nvidia trade? How'd you do on your last MyCrunch? Whatever it is. And you know what the answer always is, is well, yeah, I'll win some, I lose some, you know, I, I, I'm interested. I buy and I sell, sometimes, you know, I don't make any money, sometimes I make a little money. Now you're screwing this up. You're supposed to do the index fund. If that's your game plan, don't go buying and selling stocks for your retirement account. So that always happens, okay? So yes, you can do your own thing, but don't mess it up by going and buying and selling other stocks because that's where you need skills. All joking aside, uh, all bias or anything aside, if you're going to buy and sell stocks in an active way, you really, really need some skills. It's not something that any of you will be successful at. Uh, industry knowledge here, those of you at Robinhood buying and selling, almost none of you are profitable. And that says a lot because the market is going higher. Now Robinhood doesn't care, right? It's not their job to care. But even at TD Ameritrade, 92, per they even tell you, look up their earnings. They'll tell you how many of their Forex traders are profitable, their active equity traders are profitable. Uh, it's like 92% of you don't make any money. So if you're gonna actively trade, go do that in another account, man. Go do it over where you can risk some money. Your retirement account, you can do on your own, but you might wanna consider a set it and forget it approach, or maybe we do it. We have seven portfolios, we're buying and selling. Leave the emotion to us, we'll take care of it for you. However, if you're gonna do it yourself, I wanna give you some options. So let's say you're some, somewhat new. You go, I'm gonna manage my retirement account. I find it fascinating, and so you go, I would like to dig in, I'm gonna learn, I'm gonna figure this thing out. What are my choices, Dustin? I've got a, uh, I've got a Roth, right? Or let's say you just have a regular IRA or something like that. And you say, I'm gonna do it myself, don't need you. Love your videos, thank you, you subscribed. Oh, that's nice, you turned the bell thingy on? That's pretty sweet too, thanks so much. But you're gonna do it yourself, cool. You have choices. You've got mutual funds, uh, we'll just go mutual funds. You've got exchange traded funds. You've got stocks, you have, really, you've got Futures, you've got options as a choice. Uh, I believe currencies is still something out there, but these are the main ones. I'm gonna stick with these for today. So you've got these choices. Most of you will understand that these are your choices. If you take it further than that and you're going into futures and stuff, good job. So mutual funds, what should you look out for? You're gonna do this yourself, mutual funds. There are something called a front end load. <clears throat> I'm just gonna say front load. Uh, we'll call it a back load right look up this stuff you've got a 12b1 uh, fee you might have um, uh, they just sometimes they just call them expense ratios right all valid things that they can charge there's good arguments for all of these there's bad arguments for all of them but understand that that's your cost so if you buy a mutual fund you may be paying up front I don't like that by the way you could be paying along the way as you buy stuff I don't like that either you could be paying different marketing and administrative costs as well. No problem. Here's the thing. If a fund costs more, it doesn't mean it's bad. Like if you're comparing costs and you see one has, uh, well, I'll give you a great example. Today, actually, I was looking through a customer's account. One of the funds that they had uh, was a T. Rowe Price fund and it was 1.51% a year was the cost of this fund. And if they sold it within 90 days, they had to pay 2%. That's kind of ridiculous there but it was 1.51% a year. Now, I looked at that fund and I said, uh, actually, it's a really good fund. I didn't have anything negative to say. Now, the customer was paying more for that, so I know we're gonna save them some money by them moving it over here, and that's fine, but uh, it was a good fund. I would not argue with paying that for the fund. Why? Who wants to, someone's gonna leave a comment and go, that's ridiculous, you're paying money to have a mutual fund. Wait, the reason was not that the fund had great performance. The reason was that the fund had great performance during volatile times in the stock market. In February, that fund did not participate one for one on the drop. However, on the way up, it is participating one, a little bit better than one for one. 
right? When the stock market experiences very, very weak times, whoever's managing that fund was doing a good job sort of slowing the rate of descent. So that's why I thought that was a good one. But anyway, side topic. Mutual funds, okay? So your costs are built into the mutual fund. They make their money on the spread. If you ever look up the price of a mutual fund, it's the opposite of the way we quote stocks. So you're gonna see the net asset value and the bid price. It depends on how they word it. Every place words it a little differently. Um, but they make their money when you buy and you sell. They get a little spread there, and then they get their expense ratios over time. Totally cool. So what you'll do as a DIY investor, you'll dig through those mutual funds, you will find which ones are interesting for you. Please do not go out and just buy the four that Mr. Dave Ramsey says. You'll get confused. Everybody gets confused. Go find what fits you, please. Look for what you're interested in. So that's if you do mutual funds. Now, to buy and sell a mutual fund throughout you know, a week or a month, or let's say you change your mind over a quarter and you want to switch mutual funds, there's usually no cost to do that, meaning there's no trading commission. We've all seen the commercials, $5.95 to trade at at Schwab or whoever it is. Uh, it used to be $7 to trade at um, Scott Trade. And you go, oh, that's awesome. Uh, $5.90, wherever it is, you know you pay per trade. Well, that doesn't exist with mutual funds. You can buy and sell them as you want because they make the money on the spread. If you pay $11 for one, one unit of this mutual fund and then you decide to sell it, you'd actually be selling it for like $10.75 or something. So in layman's terms, that's how it works. And because of that, they don't need to charge you for the transaction. They also don't need to charge you for the transaction because only that company can you buy and sell from. So in, in the T. Rowe Price example, you've got a T. Rowe Price fund that the customer can buy from T. Rowe Price. They can't sell it to anybody else. They can only sell it back to T. Rowe Price. And because of that, they know they're going to get their money when you buy and sell. So they're cool with it. That's mutual funds. Exchange traded funds, you're going to have commissions. Okay, you're gonna have the cost to buy and sell. And that's because you're buying and selling on the open market. So you need a brokerage firm to do that. And so like, a, uh, like I said, a Schwab or something, if you buy an exchange traded fund, or most of them, uh, you're gonna end up paying $3.95, $4.95, $5.95 per trade. So keep that in mind. If you're a DIY investor, don't go buying 15 of those things because that's gonna add up. If you wanna rebalance your portfolio along the way, just know that that's how they'll make their money, the 395, 595, whatever it is. You're also gonna have expense ratios on ETFs, but the key here is they are so low that any dividend that's paid out will cover the cost of that. You don't actually pay anything to own an exchange, well, most exchange traded funds. I'm sure there are some that are very, very expensive, but nobody talks about them because they're not that interesting. And so that's gonna be your cost there. Uh, for owning an exchange traded fund. Pretty simple, not a big deal. Stocks, if you decide that you want to buy and sell stocks, uh, you may have to pay a commission. If you're at a Robin Hood, then you're gonna pay them in a different way because they're trying, so Robin Hood basically just moves the cost in a different way. Where you don't see a commission, they make their money elsewhere. So you're either gonna pay a commission or you're never gonna know how you paid to buy and sell those stocks. I did a video on it explaining exactly how they make their money. Uh, very, very cool if you're into that geeky stuff, by the way, but uh, that would be for stocks, okay? So if you're gonna buy and sell stocks in your uh, IRA or whatever, more than capable of doing it, just be careful. You don't want those commissions to add up. Now, here at Jazz Wealth, we do not use mutual funds. My promise to customers is I will never invest in anything that costs you money and I will never move your portfolio in a way that costs you money. We have no commissions, so you don't, you don't pay that at all. And those expense ratios, we use exchange traded, if we use exchange traded funds, they are so low that you don't actually pay a dime for them, not costing you anything. We don't have commissions. This is where we're at right here. So we can not charge you all of that because go watch the video on uh, how Robinhood makes their money. Uh, it, there's nothing sneaky about it. It's actually quite a simple process, but I dug into it pretty deeply. Um, and so that's the thing. So when you do something at uh, Jazz Wealth, for example, if you pick our dividend fund, if that's interesting to you, let's say you transfer an account and you go, I would like to uh, do the dividend fund. There are 100 stocks in that portfolio. You do not pay $5.95 per trade. We are not doing something sneaky, but uh, you have 100 stocks. So you get that diversity by working with us, you get to diversify over all of the biggest and baddest uh, dividend paying stocks, but you're not paying for it, okay? So, uh, that's basically it. Can you do it yourself? Absolutely. Uh, do you have a guy manage your uh, pool? 
I, like for example, I have a guy comes over to my house, throws stuff in the pool, moves a little stick around. He does this thing where he like dips it in there, shakes it up and looks at it and then laughs or either it's good. And he cleans out the filter. Could I do it? I don't know. To me, that is rocket science. I don't know what it is about a pool. I cannot do it myself. And I'm honest with you guys, I suck at it. I don't want to do it. I don't know how to do it. So I pay a guy to do it. The lawn service, I'm now at a point in my life where I'm just going to pay somebody to do it. I live in Florida. I don't want to mow a lawn in 100 degree weather, so we pay a guy to do it. But could you do it yourself? Sure, I could go out there and do it, no problem. But I don't. Some people are going to say, no, gosh, a pool's so simple. You just pour a little of whatever it all is. You put it in there, you stir it up, and everything's fine. For me, I don't want to. I get people that call and they say, I know what I'm doing. They just want to hear confirmation that they can do it. And I promise you, I'll tell you that. If it's best for you to go elsewhere, I'll tell you. I don't, I don't mind. But I get a lot of people that call and they go, I have other passions in life. I don't want to stare at this every day, but I need to know it's in the right spot. I don't want to just set it and forget it. We get so many people that transfer accounts from the likes of, um, oh, can I say their name? It's Millennium Trust. <laughs> so we get so many people that transfer accounts uh, because they're just not getting the help that they want. They're not a bad company. I've actually gotten to know a few of them over there from calling to do transfers, uh, but they're not bad people. They just don't offer the help. So if that's the case, yes, you might want to come check us out. You might want to consider what we offer, uh, but you don't have to. And that's the biggest thing. In order for me to say I'm a fiduciary, I have to be able to tell you you've got other options, right? I don't want to be that guy that's like, you have to come here, you've got to do this, or you suck if you don't. Eh, it doesn't matter. If you want to do it yourself, I'll talk shop with you anytime. I love talking about it, but uh, you don't have to use us by any means. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Uh, you guys interested in the open house? All right, well, I've been thinking about that the last couple days. I guess it doesn't matter if anybody really watches. It'd just probably make me feel better to do it, just to answer some questions. Been following the channel for a year. Holy cow, doing an awesome job. I want to join your clan, but your fee is very high. You can bring it down to half. Actually, goes down as you grow, Kath. And remember, you don't pay any expense ratios for our um, uh, all of our mutual funds. You don't, I'm not, not mutual funds. All of our funds, you don't pay any, any extra costs at all. Uh, we took all that garbage out. So unlike all the other advisors, take your money and then they buy mutual funds. I can't do that. I just don't believe in that. Uh, most go into day trading as if they bought a lottery ticket. Cato, you know what? I taught, no kidding, it had to be tens of thousands of people over the course of three years in 2008, 2009, and 2010 during the most wild markets most people have ever seen in their lifetime. I taught people all around the world to day trade and short-term trade, and I got to tell you, I ran into a lot of that. People that were willing to bet it all, especially when we went to China. The Chinese, whoa, boy, do they gamble. They do not have any, any fear. <laughs> They're just not scared. I would not mess with those people. Um, okay, what else do we got? Uh, you got Cato, oh, they take the seven euros. Now, that's different now because it sounds like you're overseas or you're uh, working with someone overseas. That's because of the exchange rate. That's probably not. We, we wouldn't do that in the States. Or not me, but they. Um, and you can't do weekly. Yeah, you're right. Can't do weekly com contributions. Yep. Oh, yeah. Can you buy uh, commission-free ETFs? Yes. Big, big alert. If you buy ETFs and they tell you there's no commissions, you need to check the liquidity. Check the difference between the bid and the ask spread. I hope, I hope you know what that is. Look it up if you don't. Check the difference between the bid and the ask spread and you need to see the average trading volume. Careful, very careful because about 1,490 of those commission-free ETFs, nobody's trading. And so while you might see the screen says it's $14.22 to buy this ETF, you hit the buy button, you're gonna pay $17 or something like that. Be very, very careful. Very careful. Uh, pumpkin to say, <laughs> you've seen the commercial too. Hey, doesn't that guy, would you die and go to hell before you sell an annuity? He's making a reference to a uh, TV commercial from an uh, investment company. Doesn't that guy look like he should work in a funeral home? He should not be an advisor. He should work in a funeral home. He looks so perfect for the part. Oh, man. You prefer uh, researching and picking high quality stocks, no commission, where I have, perfect. Nothing wrong with that at all, Nicole. 
Keep track of your performance. You don't want to drag. So if you like buying and selling stocks, just make sure you're keeping up with at least an index fund if that's your goal, right? If that's your goal, make sure you're doing that. If you find you're lagging behind, recognize your weakness there and go buy that fund uh, or give us a call or whatever. But, but don't, don't mess with the long-term account and leave money on the table. That's kind of what I want to say there. A lot of people get the, I'm not saying you, but a lot of people get going and they think they're doing well. They never track their progress. Come to find out if they would have bought a, uh, one of our funds that moves at half the speed of the market, their performance would have been better than them buying the stock. So uh, I'm sure you could do it, but just keep, keep that in your mind. You're, you're going to sort of measure your success rate against what you can get. Um, and don't be afraid to uh, you know, change if you're not doing well. Uh, should you do aggressive portfolio with mutual funds? I read mutual funds are best for really volatile, volatile mark. Um, I, I can't really make a specific suggestion. I'm sorry for you. I would say if you're younger, I don't care how you do it. Just be aggressive. Get the growth while you're young because I talk to so many people that are too close to retirement to take any real risk and that sucks so bad. I hate telling people that. Uh, you're new to stocks. What can you invest with $100? Uh, look around. There's lots of stocks out there that are less than $100. <laughs> Can we do a video based on the bid and ask spread? Well, I got to stay away from that a little bit. Um, that's uh, only because of what I'm allowed to say and what I can't say. Could I generally do a video? Yeah, nobody would probably watch, but uh, maybe we'll make that part of our fin tips videos. The new videos that we started putting out that are like three minutes long, they just cover one thing. That'd be a good one for that one. I like that. Okay, I appreciate all of you guys watching. Uh, we'll be back at five o'clock today for the closing beat. Don't worry, you're not missing anything in the markets, but I will cover every last drop of it if you like. We'll be back then. It is at five o'clock to cover um, all the stock market updates. Go back and look at yesterday's video. If you haven't seen one before, you can kind of see what to expect. It's pretty cool these days. We're uh, really up in our game here. Really appreciate it. If I help you in any way, hit the subscribe button. It's lunchtime here, so I'm gonna head out for a little bit. Enjoy, we'll talk to you soon. Why should you choose Jazzwealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interests comes before ours.